Five questions, five questions. This is the fun. This is the fun stuff. You know, it's, uh, people will approach me socially when we're at industry events and stuff, and they ask me all the time, they're like, what's it like in that boardroom? I'm like, it's something because we've got some personalities, and you and I were talking earlier about how we have a couple uh, sheep herders in the group that keep us on track. Good, right? Yeah. The world needs more sheep herders, especially when you got a lot of entrepreneurs in one place. Big thinkers, big doers, people who are not scared to tackle big problems. So therefore, we get all excited. So next week's board meeting should be a lot of fun. But for me, for you, what makes it fun for me is we all came to this dance party at different stages. And for me, who came at it sort of when there was nobody even dancing yet, to as Denise found her way into the party about halfway along the way, I'm really interested in like, what do you recall about when you were first bumping up against us and what we were doing? Well, you know, I was, I was thinking about when I first connected and I knew that there was a gaggle of folks in the industry that were starting, you know, that were the, the Promo Cares kind of initiative had started. Uh, I knew you were doing work to share really resources or, in, you know, kind of insight into the kind of work different distributors and suppliers were doing in this space to inspire folks or educate folks. So I kind of knew what was going on. And then I got invited to a meeting, a board meeting at Expo. And it was one of those scenarios where like no one really said what the meeting was about. It was a little bit like, hey, we'd love you to come to this meeting and just like chat a little bit about what we're doing. And then I left and I was on the board, you know, um, and I'm not even sure that like that was a question. Like it just kind of was a thing that happened that at the end I was like, oh, I guess I'm this is happening. Um, and and for me, it was an opportunity to to connect more formally and more regularly with gr a group of people who are passionate about the same things that I'm passionate about. So for us, we've you know been in the industry since um, 2006. Um, we launched our original mission was to change the world through the simple act of buying. Um, we are you know founding B Corp. Uh, we've been doing a you know greenhouse gas inventory since 2009. Um, we have been just doing this from the get-go, right? So, it, and it's been a, you know, the way I would describe it is it felt for, for us as a brand and for me personally, like there's a lot of swimming upstream in the industry. And I came from outdoor retail, I came from a retail landscape, and I came from a landscape that was, you know, to be blunt, I, I'd say, and probably continues to be a decade or maybe two decades ahead of promo in this area of impact of corporate social responsibility, ESG, sustainability, whatever you call it. So to find a group of people that were passionate about it was really um, comforting um, and useful, you know, and, and I think for me coming into it and, and, you know, it was like walking into, you know, convention of whirling dervishes too, right? So there's a lot of that energy and ideas and, and try and just get focused on like, let's be strategic. What are the buckets? How do we teach people? How do we educate people? Um, and how do we leverage this energy to, to, you know, do good in the world, right? And so it's been a really fun, um, it's been a fun thing for me and it's been yeah just having like a community of people to bounce ideas off of and and it's I've also learned a lot too because I think uh you know we'll probably talk about this um we're not a brand nor am I a person who spends a lot of time thinking about community um like impact through like fundraising like we don't do a lot of that as a brand it's not part of like the work we do we do some but it's not sort of where we spend a lot of our energy and i've been like super inspired to be around folks who just i feel like just magic happens and it's like this sort of little bit of hustle and suddenly we've raised you know what is it over 70 grand to date um and seeing because I'm not as involved in it as you are and a lot of the other people on the board, like seeing it has been like really inspiring to me and, and kind of teaching me a lot around the power of that. Oh, and, and in classic fashion, we're not just doing that. We're, we're documenting the process and sharing it with anybody who wants to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, mm -hmm. you know, you want to, you want to take this and go make it your own, like here, have it, please. I mean, we're showing the power of our medium in a very powerful way. And, you know, it's one thing to be able to kind of go to the concert. It's to get taught the sheet music and like the set list. Yeah. 
at the same time is amazing. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what I've always loved about promo cares is, you know, you know, I see it as trying to build it a toolkit or, a, you know, like how do you educate, how do you inspire, what are the resources, like how do you demystify it so it doesn't seem so hard to, to right. do better in your business? Right. Well, which sort of brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk to you about. So while your time with us was fortuitous, the timing of it has also been very interesting because we've had the good fortune now to have Danny and his time on the PPAI board. And now you've been able to sort of pick up the mantle where Danny left things off. So, you know, as your time with us has grown, your role in the industry has changed and grown as well. And it's, so I'm, I'm interested in your perspective from the boardroom around the impact of what we've done. Like, mm -hmm. should we be willing to sort of be a little bit more boastful about the work that we've done? Mm -hmm. Or is it, we can't really tell for sure. Like what's your take on that from. from well, I think promo cash is influencing the industry, you know, immensely and, and people reference it and, and uh, you know, I think it's been kind of an anchor for kind of legitimizing the movement a little bit. I think, um, things you know this work has been happening for decades in many many industries um many decades and it has been you know happening for a couple of decades in our industry like it was happening before promo cares and hopefully it'll happen after promo cares so i think what promo cares has done is is you know help find a home for some folks that are really interested in driving it forward within the industry. And I think um, brought a framework, frankly, of, you know, the buckets that we should all be looking at, be it community impact or responsible sourcing or environmental responsibility or DE&I, like what are the things we should be thinking about as an industry, mm -hmm. our specific industry? I think that's been really useful. Um, and I think, you know, the board and PPAI in general, um, what's been amazing for me and frankly why I'm on the board is corporate social responsibility is one of five strategic pillars for the organization, for the industry. And, uh, you know, of the five, there's two that I feel deeply passionate about. One is digital transformation and one is corporate social responsibility. And I think brands, whether you're supplier or distributor or anyone in our value chain, you need to embrace both to future proof your business to be there in five years and 10 years. And, and I think the folks, you know, just think about, you know, those distributors who are still faxing, how's it going for them? Right. So thinking about digital transformation, I almost see it in the same lens as, as social responsibility and, and, and corporate responsibility. Like we all have to up our game. We have to adopt new practices, new norms, new ways of doing business to, to succeed and be resilient and nimble into the future. So I think from a board perspective, I'm really passionate. Um, and I think PPAI is the perfect vehicle to really broadly um, access the industry and the players within the industry to give the tools and to sort of normalize a toolkit that will move people forward. And I reference I reference the product safety work that's been done over the last 15 years in the industry that literally has created a roadmap and a toolkit for folks to ensure that their products meet, you know, national and international product safety standards. That's what I see the end goal of the PPI work is what's the roadmap? How do we get on it? What do people expect? You know, what do I do to just hit the benchmark and the baseline? And then what do I do to go above and beyond? And and where do I start? You know, so I think I, I see, you know, promo cares continuing to influence that work um, by virtue of me being there, but I think just by virtue of existing. And, you know, there's a sustainability subcommittee of the, the product responsibility um, group that I sit on. And even on a call like this week, uh, someone mentioned promo cares, like as a reference point. So it comes up, I think it's a, um, it's been an incredible influence. Um, and I think it'll hopefully continue to be one, you know, and, uh, and I know that, that over the next five years, um, I think there's going to be a lot coming out of PPAI that's going to help the industry as a as a as a whole move. And I'm just going to do one quick plug on that, which is the second day of the product summit um, in the fall. 
is 100% dedicated to sort of sustainability and impact and not necessarily product responsibility. And if you really want to dig into what that looks like and how to do it, it's a, that's going to be a great event to go to. It's going to nice. be fun. Yeah, super nice. interesting. Because of the sheer volume of participants in our supply chain, because you and I know the statistics about the disproportionate quantity of our businesses, our small businesses in our industry, there's a crush of opportunity at the individual level that cannot be pushed forward without activity like this, because it just won't get the reach that it would otherwise get why it's important for us to do advocacy work with those within the industry who have attained reach so as to stop being like an attractor and we're more of a distributor of the information through the okay. channels that already exist. And to me, that's one of the biggest switches we've made as promo carriers over the years is we're not competing for attention anymore. We're trying to exist in the places where people already are and tell them a story they need to hear in the places that they're comfortable hearing it. And I believe really in my heart of hearts that that was a very strategic and smart choice for us as an organization because no one is disinterested in hearing what we have to say. They're mm -hmm. disinterested in having to go look for it. Mm -hmm. So if we give them a ch an easy way to find it in places they're already hanging out, they're like, oh, okay, I get that. Exactly. Now. Everyone's looking for turnkey, you know, yeah. and 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 it's not even like you know showing people where it is. It's like showing people how it's done in our right. industry, like in, our, in and I think building tools that are right sized to your point, and I think that's another piece of um, you know being on the PPAI board and being a kind of mid-sized, small, mid-sized um, distributor, bringing that perspective of like, we've got to right-size these tools. And, you know, when we look at some of the big players that are doing really interesting work in this space on both the distributor and the supplier side in terms of those top 40s, it's happening. It's happening all, like almost all of those top 40 players are doing things around corporate social responsibility but the industry is made up of everybody else. So right. one of the one of the things that I bring, you know, up um, at the board level is like, let's right size the tools. Let's make sure that everybody has access, and let's make sure that we're building things that people can pick up, whether they're a solopreneur or a four person shop or a forty person shop, you know. And let's make sure that we're building things that are accessible and usable by the whole industry, and not just those that have, you know, a CSR team on right. their staff right because we're not going to move the dial if that's all we're doing so exactly yeah. so i'm going to give you the chance to talk about our current campaign water for good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so i think you know i referenced this before where um we're you know as a brand we've been really focused on on product on supply chain on supply chain impacts um and um you know, the fundraising side of things has never been a huge part of our brand. So watching promo cares and just build build this model to make it easy has been like awesome. And and also just seeing the hustle of like the crew is I find it super inspiring. Um so Water for Good is our most recent campaign. It's our third formal campaign as, as Promo Cares. I think we raised over 70 grand over the last two campaigns. And this one is unique in that it um it not just addresses an, in, an issue that's important to all of our communities um, and humanity in access to clean water, it addresses an issue that I think is really critical to our industry in terms of our own industry impacts and in terms of our industry product and solutions, right? We've created a campaign for the first time that people can pick up and literally run with, with their clients and engage their clients in the story, engage their staff in the story in a way that I don't know that we've nailed it before. So I'm, I'm pretty psyched about this one and I think it's going to serve as a model for the future. So Water for Good is a campaign that partners with the Planet Water Foundation. The goal Goal is to build three aqua towers in Mexico. Uh, they're about twenty grand a pop, I think. Roger, is that is that right? Um, yep. I think we're um, well on our way to getting the first one, getting close to the first one. And um, what we've 
done is we've been able to bring in a lot of suppliers who have earmarked sales from a portion of um, sales of water bottles. Uh, we have HPGs come in with their reef safe sunscreen, um, things that have to do with water and impact to water. Uh, and we've created a little toolkit where you can go out to your customers. There's going to be a Zoom catalog getting published and say, support us, support um, um, this campaign through purchasing water bottles. I know at Fairware, what we're doing is we're donating 1% of proceeds for all, 1% uh, of sales actually for all um, water bottle sales for the entire um, duration of the campaign, which is Q2 this year. And uh, yeah, I think it's a fun way to just see how, um, how we can kind of connect the dots in the industry to the product, but also, you know, a stat that's pretty sobering is 20% of global um, clean water pollution uh, in the world is a function of like dyeing and finishing textiles. So like this is a really critical impact area in our in our space. And I think that's where um, I'm excited to see promo cares go is not just the let's donate and not get to some of the root causes. So you know what um, you know looking at no dye technology or low impact dye technology or I know a lot of our major you know um, brands in the industry, be it Toltex or Next Level or Bella Canvas, all of those major brands are doing enormous work on, on wastewater capture, for example. And so that's like some of the stories that I think we also have to tell when we talk about a fundraising initiative like this is, is we're culpable as an industry in these impacts. So how do we just get our ducks in a row, both on a fundraising side to kind of help clean up at the end of the pipe but what are the conversations we need to have as distributors in terms of who we're purchasing from and what products we're purchasing from and then the manufacturing partners and suppliers what are they doing in their manufacturing processes sourcing dyeing finishing to just mitigate this issue so we don't have to build aqua towers um, because there's access right. to clean water so i mean that's kind of the conversation that i think that promo cares it's it's reflective like I, I think that's the magic of promo cares is there's this part of the crew is just like you know this machine at fundraising and like pulling these things off on what looks like a dime to me <laughs> and then there's people in the room like myself and that are like okay well let's say you know scott and like let's link it back to these bigger conversations and educate people that you know we can't close our eyes to the to the impact we have as an industry and and that's the hard work yeah. Writing the checks is the easy work. Right. And that's what I want to make sure that at Promo Cares we're 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 can you know we're letting people into that conversation around well what does that hard work look like? Have you looked at your t shirt suppliers? Like which ones have wastewater management programs? Pick those ones, pick those suppliers to sell. Um, and help eliminate some of these issues or mitigate or or sort of uh, reduce the impact of some of the things that we sell. So uh, uh, on on the surface, it appears that, oh, I'm just organizing elements of my marketing campaign to be a reflection of what buying trends are, and nothing could be more further from the truth. It's If you care, then you will go to the trouble to do this level of investigation, and what makes what we're doing really valuable to the community is you don't have to be on your own. There are other people who are doing this work and who are willing to share what they've learned with you. All you have to do is ask. And by raising, yeah, and I think, you know, and I think most of our, like most of our major suppliers, you know, we sort of in, in other podcasts, you know, we reference Sandmar a lot, but I, I can't help but reference them again around um, their corporate social responsibility reporting. Right. So it's, easy like we send their report to clients when we're selling their products and it's like here like this is everything they're doing um so it's also like I, I do think we've moved a long way as an industry and that transparency into the work that people are doing you know i think gemline's coming out with a csr report if they haven't already in the coming week or two and uh you know it's that access to information, the transparency around the initiatives that people are taking in our supply chain and at the distributor level even um, has come a long way. So it's a little bit easier to get at that information too. And I think if we as distributors are asking if they're not doing it, if our supplier partners aren't doing it, they're going to be like, huh, I just got like four questions this quarter on like how, what kind of, you know, work we're doing around wastewater management in our manufacturing. And, and and 
often what it'll be, it'll be like, it's either nothing and the light bulb goes off that they should be looking at it, or it's, oh, we're doing a ton. We've never thought to talk about it. We've never thought to disclose like the fact that we have, you know, a zero waste, you know, management system for, you know, in our dye baths or whatever it is. Um, it, you know, what we find, cause we, you know, I think a lot of people know that we assess all of our suppliers. We ask a lot of questions. We often find that people have these incredible things going on, and it's never crossed their mind that we care. Um, and then they start to realize, oh, oh, this is like a point of differentiation. This is something yes. we should be communicating, and, and yes. uh, if not marketing. So, yes. yes, and until you understand it to some degree of, um, you've you've consumed it enough that it becomes second nature to a certain degree. Until you get to that point, it makes it very difficult for you to understand how to use that information. Mm -hmm to your advantage so that you can actually start asking proactive leading discovery questions with your clients to uncover some of things that they may be uh, interested or care about, but have not thought to ask about in the past. And because in, in you, this category of spend, you know, yeah. like, yeah, Correct. yeah, you'd be, um, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah. So yeah. I have to tell you, uh, you came in the room for the first board meeting and it was almost like a celebrity was showing up uh, you had been done like an old grizzled so veteran. much work already <laughs> and we knew that we would have a lot to gain yeah. from just having you as a part of the discussion let alone being a part of our board so knowing that 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 was where we were coming from like what's been sort of the prevailing like when was there a mo was there a moment along the way where you were like, all right, these are my people, like this is where I'm supposed to be, like? Yeah, I mean, I think when I, you know, when I walked in the room, and I think I knew some of you before and some not so well, and and uh, like I knew you and Danny, and um, I didn't really know, you know, Mandy and Carrie, who, you know, and Meg, and like everyone's just so awesome. Like I feel like I just got this whole new posse. Um, so just a, like a, you know, um, a level of comfort. Uh, um, I think for me, like being, I've mentioned this, but being like super inspired by the hustle around the fundraising and the, just the ability to pull off a campaign and watching it succeed was really illuminating for me. Um, and uh, yeah, like I just, I, I think it's, I think it's been interesting. And I think like, um, you know, I, I alluded earlier to this experience of feeling like you're swimming upstream. And I think for folks that are early adopters, it's a particular muscle group that you have to build and you get really effective and you get really strong, right? And you you know what it feels like to swim against a current. I think what um, is more difficult or more surprising for folks is when the kind of tide changes or the, that suddenly you're swimming downstream and hmm. the current is going so fast and there's so much going on. And in fact, things are starting to pass you. Right. Like you've been used to just like head down, like grinding it out, trying to do this stuff while everyone's like, what are you even on about? And then suddenly the current changes and everyone is doing it. And that skill set of like acknowledging that like you're not the you're not the only one, you're not the like kind of letting go of the ownership and letting go of um, kind of being you know, the, the, like keeping the secrets and, you know, it's like sort of really just letting go and being like, okay, like I got to go with the flow now. And like, what does that even look like? And, and understanding that things are passing you by potentially because the current's so fast all of a sudden. And I think that's where we're at in the movement. So I think Promacares needs to take stock of that and understand where are we positioned? How do we be nimble? How do we continue to support and understand that, industry associations, be it ASI or PPAI, um, brands, et cetera, are all like, they're, they're gonna quickly be ahead because they have capacity and money and like people power to push ahead. So where do we fit into the future? And I think that's an, gonna be an interesting like debate and, and discussion for all of us. Um, and I think it's something that for us as a brand, like for Fairware as a brand, like we're living it, right? And you were joking earlier, you were chatting about some things we're gonna be rolling out in the next few months. And you're like, oh darn, how do you have to always be ahead? And like, <laughs> you know, it's it has always been our brand differentiation. Um, we, were, we were the first 
certified B Corp in the industry. Um, and as that space has become more competitive, on the one hand, we're like, woohoo, like right. finally, it's been our mandate to move the dial in this industry from day one. And, and so it's happening. And so now how do we continue to be out ahead and to make sure that when people are Googling sustainable branded merchandise, like we still want them to find us because sure. we, we're pretty confident and we feel like we are the OG and kind of the most um, sort of authentic sustainable brand in this industry. And we know it. And now we're just like, okay, it used to just come to us, right? Because that we were kind of the only ones or one of the few. And now we're competing for that um, mantle. And we're like, we're literally rolling up our sleeves. Um, and which is like not something as a women-owned business and particularly as a Canadian, like it's not really how we roll, but it's it's been kind of fun to get that sense of like, how do we move forward as a brand at Fairware? And you're going to see some of that, um, you know, over the coming months. And I think it'll just continue to like, there'll be a new line in the sand um, for the industry. And we're psyched about it. You know, we're psyched about being part of that. And I think there's, you know, you're seeing that there's a small cohort where it used to be one or two people. Now it's maybe 20 people, but I'm pretty excited because that 20, that, co that cohort is setting some new lines in the yeah. sound that there's, you know, there's still going to be, people are going to have to hustle to keep up. So yeah. we're excited about that. And, and yeah. there's sort of a competitive piece that is, you know, sort of un-Canadian that's coming out in us. <laughs> yeah. It's competing in a marketplace you help create. And it's exactly. one of the most unique situations for an entrepreneur to be mm -hmm. in. And in many ways, it has sharp edges on both sides of it. When it comes it to does. I was, I was actually reflecting on, um, I was the first speaker at the first SKUCon. Wow. In Vegas. And wow. like literally the first like at 9 a.m. Like I opened wow. the conference and I remember like people kind of being like a bit quizzical, you know, like yeah. what are you on about? And, <laughs> and I remember talking about being like wanting to be kind of whole foods of the industry, you know, yeah. like wanting to be that brand in the industry. And anyways, I was reflecting on that a little bit. This sort of memory came up this morning as I was thinking about our call, but just like introduce. I felt like that was when we introduced ourselves to the industry was that 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 stage. And yeah. Pre-memory center, whatever that little theater was before. And you continuously serve as the iron that sharpens the rest of us. So we yeah. appreciate that from you. Yeah. And I cannot thank you enough for you taking the time to put in these five questions and uh, let all of the people out there in Promo Cares land get a little peek into what uh, makes Denise, Denise tick. So thank you for that. Yeah.